We're going to talk to Robert calling in from South Carolina. Let's see if we can get Robert on the line here. Robert, can you hear us? Hello. Yep. Hey, Robert, what's going on? Hi, Robert. Hey, Dan. Hey, Kelly. How y'all doing? Doing good. Doing good. Doing Just great. Chilling like a villain, as Jamming. the kids say. I don't think kids say that. Space Jam either, buddy. I'm with you on Space me. Jam. Look, I'll, absolutely. I'm ready to slam I'm and jam. Hey, man. Yeah. yeah I, I, Michael Jordan back in the day with, uh, with the NBA and all-star teams and all that. I mean, that was big. Mm -hmm. That was real big back then. Yeah, yeah. when Michael Jordan um, passed the ball to Bugs Bunny and made that dunk, I'll never forget that. It's, it's, <laughs> anyway, that's – uh, I, that's the most of my yeah. basketball experience is Space Jam, I will admit. But let, let's it, let's get to the call here. What's going on, Robert? It always amazed me that they didn't talk All about right. that more in history classes. I, I know, right? Michael Jordan helped defend the world, uh, and Bill Murray too. And we just we just treat him like normal people. Yeah. I don't know. That's mm -hmm. crazy. And anyway, we grew up with Bugs Bunny too on Saturdays. So I mean, right. it's, it's it's a tie-in from a whole bunch of things that we love back then. So. We're gonna get sued by Warner no, Brothers. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Anyway, what's <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Robert? Well, I want to talk about politics. It's it's a wonder. Listening, I've been uh, a listener to the ACA for quite some time, a few months now, and you know, kind of like uh, Netflix, kind of binge watch. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I, I love the, the shows. I like the arguments and never really to put two thoughts into into politics or to uh, religion too much until just a few months ago. I had a friend come down and um, he really wanted me to look into it because he was very passionate about Christianity. So okay. I did. And uh, a few months later, he got the answer I don't think he was looking for. <laughs> oh, yeah. It just didn't take me long. Yeah, it just didn't take me long. Um, I mean, I was agnostic for maybe two weeks. I guess you can, you know, kind of say, but anyways, um, into politics, you know, there's a lot of people out there that just won't talk religion or politics, especially mm -hmm. strangers. And I'm, I've always been the kind that just open up and just talk to whoever wants to talk. Um, but see, you know, religion can be very divisive and so can politics. And that's like cardinal rule, really, that you don't talk about these two subjects and especially mm -hmm. with strangers. Yeah. Um, but, but with politics, it's a little bit different. Of course, we know politics is real. You know, we, we all, you know, watching TV every day, but, you know, we get the same results from politics as we do. I think religion, there really doesn't come anything constructive. Nothing constructive comes from it. Like we might mm -hmm. go down there to vote, but there's, there's really nothing, no change that ever comes from it. Don't seem like. And Ooh. so I got to thinking, well, what is representation? Well, representation is simply um, finding out what unites uh, a particular constituency, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's finding ideas and then seeing if there's some type of, um, you know, constituency out there that will also like that idea and see how many people other than you that will like that idea. And then, you know, maybe candidates will adopt that idea and use it as part of their platform to run sure. for Sure. But, you know, that doesn't happen. You know, it's it's an ideology of a party, and um, we just kind of run with that. And I think most mm -hmm. people vote to vote against the other party. Right? Nobody really constructively votes for a good reason. Nobody votes for good ideas. No, You know, that's... Um, so well, I thought what a good idea would be is start a small business, maybe on a county level, you know, have that county of the people you know, introduce ideas and then have the same people that county uh, judge those ideas, right? So basically you're building momentum for ideas to solve problems. Then over a course of a month or two, you know, or, or a year or two maybe, you know, you, you can start to begin to see the people are creating a mandate or, or of sorts with the most popular ideas. I, I then, mean, you know, led to the first candidates can see this. Uh, we can see this for ourselves, and for the first time, I think for the first time ever, you know, the, the the public is starting to put a mandate together that isn't an ideology, but rather, you know, straightforward mm. ideas on things that they want done. 
Okay, so I, I'm going to cut this off here. A couple different things here. A couple different things here. One, you're saying that like religion doesn't change, but politics do change. But like, I actually disagree with you on that uh, because religion is inherently tied into politics always, even in a secular state. Religion still matters as far as our political decisions. And whether or not the actual events of a particular religion are true or not, it still affects the everyday living of people. For example, if you go to Iran right now and you try to walk your dog in public in certain places, you, they're not going to let you do that because of like Shia mandates that say like, um, well, um, you know, according to Islam, uh, the, the, the saliva of a dog is unclean. And therefore, they have this law in place that, you know, you can't walk your dog in public. So, like, we in the United States are sometimes more privileged because we don't uh, necessarily have to deal with the intersections of religion and uh, the state like that. Although it does happen all the time. We're still, like, pro having problems with it. It's not on the level of some other places. And also, like, interdenominate, like, denominations depending on the organizations like they have lots of votes for like within their own organization like look at the big thing with the united methodist church that's a huge deal them talking about the acceptance of gay marriage or not in their churches and other issues that like the southern baptist conventions have faced recently so like that's a whole other game there of religion and politics being put together but, um doesn't that surprise you though there's there's no sharing of ideas and judging these ideas and certain constituencies and then looking for candidates to adopt these ideas as part of our platform as i mean there, but there is though i don't know how you say there isn't there's like political campaigns for this kind of stuff all the time like what like i maybe it's not in the way that you would want it to be but like there's still definitely a campaigning well, no. of ideas for sure yeah, if, I, if, you, I, if you break down what representation is, though, isn't it some type of uh, con consensus between a constituency? Isn't that? And then finding somebody to do now, exactly that consensus? I agree with you that politics in this country is broken okay. and that we don't always get the representation that we deserve yeah. or that what best reflects the people in this country. I'm just um, saying the but, money in politics these days you know. might have a huge effect on that and where we there's no way we could find any type of representation because ultimately yeah. at the end of the day the money is going to be represented in you know yes. in the parties that's all i agree with you there and right. as long as it doesn't conflict with the interest of those you know i'm sure it'll get passed you know yeah. but you know if it conflicts at all with anybody who invests money into the parties you know they're you know no idea is really going to catch any any momentum you see what i mean yeah. Go ahead, and Kelly. You want to say something? Right? I was about to say I can see how how um, you might think that problem is even worse too. When part when uh, you'll see votes along party lines, um, a local politician here is an ex-teacher, and he voted to cut funding for um, school school funding here in Michigan by a lot. And I confronted him one day in our local grocery store and asked him, as a teacher, how could he do that? And he said that he couldn't change the one line in the budget and he had to go along with his party. Well, I don't understand why he had to go along with his party. If you don't agree with something that's in the bill, don't vote for it. Right. So I can totally understand what yeah, you're saying. We're not getting our representation Absolutely. because they're voting yep. with the party instead. Right. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah. You would think they would all be independent and they would all like, you know, sure enough, the party got them elected. You would think they would all still be independent once they get to elected office and they'll cross lines, they'll talk to each other, and they'll find some common ground and pass things and, and do it in a constructive manner. I mean, I know they used to do that back in the 60s, 70s, and even 80s. But, uh, you know, a lot of that doesn't go on these days. And it's just yeah. troublesome to, to see that. And, you our, know, like I said, poli the comparison uh, between politics and religion these days is something taboo. We're not allowed to talk about. We're not allowed to try to find that representation or even talk about it. And and that's something I just want to expose. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's important, I think, the public finds representation. It, it, yet I don't see anybody wanting to talk about it. Like, what well, because representation? there's ideologies and parties out there. You vote. Sure, but... Look how many people, though, Robert, uh, are are against the uh, current presidency and presidencies prior because of the religious beliefs of their constituents. You know, uh, like like even it affected John F. Kennedy because he was a Catholic. People didn't like that, and that was a whole thing. So so people will emphasize or downplay certain parts of their own religious beliefs 
to like to perform for their constituents in some way or another like i like religion in the in the political sphere is almost always been a performance um i don't know how you could get around that really yeah. honestly you know honestly like there's yeah. never going to be in, at least in 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 the next five or ten years an atheist constituent that's going to like appeal just to me because i'm too small of a demographic it's going to be the larger religious majority in this country at least well, um because yeah, that's just how it is matter if he's religious or if he's atheist right i mean as long yeah. as he represents that's the true constituency which he yeah, yeah. So I get the, that. the point is, I mean, we're not we're, we're, there is no structured organization to build momentum for ideas. I get you. I think there's a lot of political um, uh, political scientists. Robert, I think there's a lot of political scientists who are interested in this conversation and who talk about like new methods of voting, new methods of representation, um, and talk about fixing issues in this country, like gerrymandering and things where we're not seeing that kind of representation. Um, but, um, yeah, like I, I do think people are interested in that for sure. So, something that Robert and I had a conversation earlier, I was hoping it was you when you mentioned politics, but, uh, one of the things that we talked about today was campaign financing laws too. And mm -hmm. I think that's where we, we run into a lot of our problems at when politicians are so busy trying to make money to run for reelection instead of doing their job, we have a problem and we're seeing mm -hmm. a little too much of that on a federal level today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I'm glad you called in, Robert. Thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you called in about it too, Robert. Um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let this call go right now. But uh, the only thing I was going to add too is that the Atheist Community of Austin itself is a nonprofit. So, you know, we we have specific restrictions about our um, you know representation in politics. We can't endorse specific candidates uh, because we work as a nonprofit. And I would expect the same out of every nonprofit in this country and every church in this country as well. But like, obviously that doesn't happen. There's a lot of churches out there and there's video evidence of people endorsing specific candidates and stuff. And I, I, I do think that's definitely a problem. Um, but um, yeah, I, 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 I do think people are interested in ideas. Um, I just... Um, you know, people just have a lot of different opinions on how to do that. So maybe that's where the real debate is at.